Hello and welcome to another low-tech video. Today we're going to look at our 2018 study of potato growing methods. We are excited to get a sustainable education and research education grant to work with market gardeners and others in this study. A search for potato growing methods brings up dozens of configurations from traditional trench and hill planting to bags, tubs, and towers, as well as simply placing the seed potato on the ground and covering it with mulch. We decided to test five methods. First, we tried the trench and hill method, the traditional way of burying potatoes in a half foot deep trench with compost, and then the plant is hilled up as it grows. This was our control. Second, we tried two surface planting methods. In one, we put the seed potato on the surface with a scoop of compost and deep straw mulch. In the next, we did the same thing but added newspaper layers to help suppress weeds below the straw. Finally, we tried two types of containers. One was a grain bag filled with soil, compost, and straw mulch for the seed potato to grow in. As the potato grew, more fill was added. We also tried the famous potato towers, which are wooden boxes that get higher as the potato grows. As they grow, fill is added. All of the different methods got the same amount of compost, mulch, sun, water, and space at each one of our 10 grow plots. This means we can compare the growth between each plot within each location. We had 10 participants from across southern Wisconsin, Raleigh Hillside Farm, the Low Technology Institute, Cedar Moon Farm, Melissa and Albion, Betty at the Old Smith Place, Mike the Worm Guy in Milwaukee, Rock Ridge Cooperative, the Parisi Family Farm, John Mark in Fullerton, and Greg in Fitchburg. Throughout the year, they did a great job weeding, watering, hilling, and battling with Colorado potato beetles and voles. And then it was the end of the season and time to harvest. At Cedar Moon Farm, we recorded the harvesting and recording process. Cedar Moon Farm is run by Ben and Margie Candler out near Soldiers Grove, Wisconsin. They're market gardeners, and you can find them and many of our growers at farmer's markets in southern Wisconsin. Cedar Moon also has an active Instagram page full of great vegetable photos. As you can see, the potato plants have largely died off by the end, except in the towers, and this is about typical for the life cycle of potato plants. The first to be harvested were the trench and hill potatoes, seen here on the Parisi family farm in full growth. These required a spading fork and a lot of work to dig up each of the potatoes. We tried to avoid spearing any spuds as this reduces their marketability. It's also a messy and heavy job to dig all the potatoes out and it never feels like you get them all. Here we're digging up 18 plants planted in rows and trenches. As the plants are dug, we put the potatoes in a four gallon bucket. When it's full, we weighed it, recorded the weight, and dumped them in a bin. The yield from each growing method was segregated into different bins. This was only part of our data gathering. Every two weeks, growers also filled out a form to record how many hours they worked on each of the different plots, how big the plants were, if they watered, weeded, dealt with pests, or hilled up or filled up the potatoes with more mulch and compost. Together, this helps us determine which type of growing method takes more time. Next came the surface planted potatoes, both the straw only and newspaper and straw plots. These were much easier to harvest. We just had to push the mulch back and there they were, like a big crown of beautiful spuds. We did get a few more green ones in the surface planting when the mulch got moved away. Surface spuds were also more likely to get eaten by voles, which are like little mice that burrow under the mulch and munch on bulbs and roots. Only a few people had voles, and most of them had their potato beds near the edge of their garden plot so the voles could sneak in from the grass or bushes. Next came the bag potatoes, shown again at the Parisi farm in full growth. These were really easy to harvest, simply dump the bag on its side and pull it away. The 50 pound grain bags we used were donated from the Wisconsin Brewing Company, but they were not UV resistant and some disintegrated and left plastic behind, so it would be best to buy UV resistant ones if you try this method. The bags seemed more resistant to waterlogging, which affected some buried and surface plantings. Finally came the potato towers, shown again here at the Parisi farm. The idea is that if we keep adding mulch and forcing the potatoes to grow longer roots, they'll have more space to make potatoes. But we didn't find this to be the case. 
In every single potato tower, all of the potatoes were found at the bottom of the tower, near the level of the seed potatoes. They were easy to harvest by simply tipping them over and pushing them aside the mulch. After harvest, we counted the potatoes from each plot. This way we could get an average potato size to see if there was a difference. Let's look at the data. First, we saw a lot of variation. Most of the growers with low yields have been waterlogged or attacked by voles. The most consistently high yielding method was the trench and hill, which grew about 130% more pounds of potatoes than the surface planting methods on average. But trench and hill took twice as much work per pound to harvest. So while the surface planting methods yielded slightly less in our study, they were much more efficient in terms of time. So if somebody has a lot of space, a big plot of surface potatoes would make up for the lower yield and still save time. But voles loved the surface potatoes. And if you have voles, burying the potatoes under soil or wood chips seems like a much better mulch than straw. The bags yielded least among the methods we tried, but they are considerably cheaper than the towers. So if you're growing potatoes on a balcony or some other restricted location, UV resistant bags or other containers might be better than towers in terms of cost, even though the yield was lower. Simply plant more of the low cost option to make up for less yield. In only one case did the towers produce more than other methods. After a little research, I found that there may be a reason that some people experience great yields with towers and others do not. Potatoes are formed not from the roots, but from runners the potato plants put out on the third stage of their growth. This is the same time as the flowers appear. Therefore, people who have potato towers and continue to fill the towers with mulch after the flowers have appeared are not increasing the amount of potatoes being made, just forcing the plant to grow longer stalks and work harder to grow. If the plant is filled up very quickly, before it reaches the third stage of growth, it's possible that more potato growing runners will be produced, but I'll be testing this out next year. Another interesting comparison was the average size of potatoes. We expected heavy soils, like clay, to result in smaller spuds, but this was not the case as potatoes in loam and clay perform similarly. Also, we didn't see more variability between the methods by soil type. Unfortunately, with the voles and waterlogging, our data were not as conclusive as we would have liked, and future tests to corroborate or overturn our conclusions are needed. This is only some of the data and analysis gleaned from our study. We've got a summary article for gardeners on our website linked in the video notes below, and we'll soon have a more in-depth write-up for professionals ready to go. Thank you to all our gardeners and for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got lots of videos on topics from gardening to traditional construction. While you're at it, head over to our website, lowtechinstitute.org, and sign up to receive our blog in your inbox. We're working on new research projects, so stay tuned for news about that. Thanks for watching.